Yes, Seth. Okay. Yes, Tom. Question. KB, <laughs> except KB. Any question? Uh, <laughs> Matt, we've talked a lot about the offense these first two games. How would you assess how you guys have played defense? Uh, defensively, you know, I think we're still lacking a little bit, and we're, you know, we've been working on that. Um, you know, especially when you have a lot of new guys coming into our system, you don't necessarily expect them to click on automatically. Um, but I think we're taking a lot of strides in getting better defensively, and I think um, you know, within the next coming games, you'll see a lot of uh, people stepping up in that area. Is there something specific you guys need to do better? One area we've definitely focused on is transition defense. Um, you know. A lot of people are used to matching up with their own guy or their own assignment when running back on defense, and that's something that we don't do at Xavier. Um, so, you know, we have the closest guy pick up the ball, and when you have guys running back, you know, with the ball next to them and they're not picking them up, it, it makes it hard, harder for us to stop, you know, transition defense. So I'd say that's one area we're working on specifically. But, um, you know, rebounding is always a big issue for us, and um, offensive rebounding, didn't really show in the Northern Arizona game, and we talked about that. And um, I think we did a good job of stepping it up in the Long Beach State game. Matt, can you talk about the, uh, the guy on your left? Did you expect him to be as good as he's been? Um, I want to say yeah, but I mean, whenever anyone asks me, like, you know, who do you think could be an impact freshman, or who you know, and I always said, you know, Trayvon Blewett. I, I mean, from when we got to play in Brazil and seeing him practice and stuff like that, I, I knew he was a, a good player. So. Um, I want to say yes and no. Did I expect him to be this good? You know, maybe not necessarily, maybe yes. But um, he's done a great job for us. And, you know, as long as he can remain consistent for us, then he'll be a huge asset. Is there a nickname for him, Trey Blue? Um, I'm just hoping there's no nicknames like, oh, you blew it or something like that. So. <laughs> uh, to be honest, not really. I just want to go out and just give uh, the best I could for my team and do all that I could to, you know, help us get where we needed to be. But, uh, you know, I, I guess the play has taken me to somewhere that I never expected. So, you know, I'm kind of grateful for the opportunity. But, you know, to, when it's all said and done, I didn't expect to be, you know, in this position. Part of the coach is doing a good job. Of, uh, I say good job of knocking you down a run or two, so not to put you in all things just yet. Yeah, you know, and I don't even put myself in that category. You know, uh, I just want to go out and play. And you know, they, you know, they know what to expect from me. I know what to expect. So, you know, you know, they, you know, they. Nobody's really been hyping me up or anything like that. And after every game, I kind of forget those past accomplishments and I always focus on the next game. So, Trayvon, what has the adjustment been like for you? Because it, it looks easy, but have you felt a lot of difference from high school to college, or what's it been like for you? It's very different. You know, the pace of the game is a lot quicker. Uh, players are a lot stronger and a lot smarter. So, you know, um, it may seem easy on the court, but really it's not. It's harder than it seems. You know, in practice, going against these type of guys, you know, I've been struggling a lot. And, you know, that's what a lot of fans don't get to see is the struggle that I go through every day in practice playing with these great group of guys. So, you know, it's definitely harder than it seems. Matt, can you talk about Stephen F. Austin? They don't seem to have a lot of height like you guys do, but they have a lot of talented um, forwards and wing players that can really shoot. Yeah, um, they're sort of a scrappy team. And, you know, we've been preparing for them, you know, this past day, and we'll get ready for them again today. Um, but, yeah, from what we know about them is, you know, they're shorter, they're smaller, but they work really hard, and they're going to deny every pass. So that's something maybe we're not used to. Um, so we're going to have to work on handling the pressure. But, yeah, I mean, they said uh, they have a preseason player of the year for their conference in a, a forward slash center role. And um, so they're, they're going to be tough. And they force, I think, about 10 turnovers a game and score a lot of points off those um, mistakes. So, I mean, going back to what you're saying about transition defense and how imperative it's going to be already tomorrow. It's going to be huge. And if we can take good shots, limit bad shots, and take care of the ball, that's really going to help our transition defense. Because, you know, like I said, they, they get out and deny the ball. Like, every position, they're trying to either get a steal or force pressure. Um, so, obviously, it's a lot harder to guard transition defense when you're turning over the ball or you're having um, bad shots produce long rebounds and then having, having them push it out. Matt, I've got to think this is the first time in your career you've faced two Lumberjacks teams in a three-game stint. Mm -hmm. What would it mean for you guys to open 3-0 and go 2-0 against Lumberjacks? That would be great. Um, I'm sort of growing my beard to look like a Lumberjack, so um, hopefully we have some Lumberjack on Lumberjack action. Okay. <laughs> Question for both of you. It's been great. Um, I haven't got to do it in a long time. 
I don't. Even, I think my sit out year, I didn't even go home because we were busy here or whatever. Um, so I haven't been home in, for Thanksgiving in four years, going on five. But my parents are gonna come out uh, to California for the tournament, so I'm excited <laughs> about that. But I'd say honestly, I like Thanksgiving a little more than Christmas too. It's just the atmosphere is better, so I'm looking forward to it. Yeah, it'll be a different experience uh, for every Thanksgiving. All of my family from all over comes over to our house. So this will be the first year that I'll be away from my family. I don't think my parents are going to make it up to California either. So it's definitely going to be different. And, uh, you know, hopefully I survive without them and a home cook meal. What do you remember about the holiday as a kid? Nothing really, you know. Every time we wake up, I go downstairs, my grandma and my grandpa usually come down the day before, so I wake up with them and then we always cook breakfast. And that's the only time I get to drink coffee. My dad never lets me drink coffee. So that's my only exception. And then uh, around like four o'clock, we'd have our dinner. And then we sit around and pray before that. And then, you know, we'd probably go outside and back when it was hot during that time. And then we'd go outside and just uh, shoot. And then that's pretty much it for the little kids. And then the grownups would go out on the porch and do their grown up stuff. So that's pretty much it. Oh.